Transitioning from a sexy relationship to a platonic one can happen from different places. Each has its own particular issues. Maybe you've just broken up with someone but can't quite seem to let go yet. Maybe your ex wants to stay friends and you don't. Maybe your new lover is still living with their ex and you're not sure if that's a red flag or just a sign of a tough housing market. Transitioning from a sexy relationship to a platonic one is absolutely possible if that is what you both want and if you avoid a few common pitfalls. Keep watching and I'll show you what psychology research has to say about how to set that friendship up for success. If you're new here, my name is Doris. I'm a certified personality coach with a master's in applied psychology and I help smart romantics build meaningful relationships. Let's start with why someone would want to stay friends with an ex. A 2017 study showed that the main reasons are security, practical, civility and unresolved romantic desires. Staying friends for security and practical reasons actually seem to work pretty well, although friendships based on practicality and civility reasons didn't last very long. Unsurprisingly, unresolved romantic desires of one partner and not the other did not result in a flourishing friendship. A study in 2011 showed that the happier people were about the breakup and after the breakup, if both parties knew it was the right decision and are both okay with it, the more likely they were to stay friends. We're going to go into more detail for this in a minute, but for now, setting your friendship up for success. Tip number one, be aware of your motivation. Have you actually accepted the separation? Why do you want to stay friends with your ex? Is it to stay on their health insurance until you can figure out your next move or because you have kids together and want to co-parent with kindness? Your chance for success is considerable. However, if you're secretly hoping this is just a phase and you'll get back together eventually, you may be disappointed. I know it's hard, but all relationships go through phases and it's okay if they change shape over time. Take the time you need to grieve and talk to a professional if you need more support than your friends or family can provide. Moving on, another 2017 study showed a clear gender difference. Men's motivations to stay friends were mainly practical and related to maintaining access to sex, money or status after breaking up. Especially if they also scored high on the so-called non-pathological dark triad personality traits of Machiavellianism, narcissism and psychopathy, which indicates that those individuals are more interested in short-term hookups than long-term relationships anyway. It's a sobering fact, and of course the researchers are not saying that all men have these traits, but it's something to be aware of. This study also found that participants who were friends first were more likely to be friends afterwards as well. However, they pointed out that lack of support from their friends or family and new romantic partners pose some challenges to keeping that friendship going. And I think we've all had that experience, right? Where someone has an opinion and knows what's best for you. Obviously, if your ex hurt you and you told your family all about it, they take your side and want to protect you. After you break up, when they hear you're still friends, they might have a hard time believing that your relationship has shifted and that you're okay with it. So before we get to tip number two, how do you know when a relationship has shifted? Let's unpack some of the moving parts that all influence not just our ability to stay friends with exes, but also our psychological well-being. Here are a few questions to ask yourself. What's your level of separation acceptance? What's your level of attachment to your ex? Are you in contact with your ex? And are you having sex with your ex? We already talked about separation acceptance in tip number one. And here's what a 2012 paper shows. If we take attachment theory as a lens, romantic separation can feel like a threat and cause feelings of emotional and physical abandonment. Because you learn to co-regulate with your partner, not having them around anymore literally dysregulates your nervous system. The one person who you used to turn to to make you feel better is now the reason you feel bad. Which is why some people find it hard to go no contact because reconnecting with the ex or staying in touch somehow, even if it's just seeing what they post online, can provide temporary relief from those feelings of abandonment. Unfortunately, this kind of online stalking tends to cause more pain as it leads you to remember what you no longer have, which then makes you suffer for longer. So set your post breakup friendship up for success. Tip number two, be aware of your level of emotional attachment to your ex. 
be aware that if you miss them, it is probably your nervous system that wants to co-regulate with them because that's what you're used to doing. Since you are no longer together, it would be more helpful if you transferred those needs away from your ex and toward other supportive people in your network. So, who else can you call for a chat or meet for a walk until your emotional attachment to your ex has stabilized? But wait, there's more. Assuming you had sex with your ex, your body activated a deep physiological reward system. In other words, sex feels great and is good for your mental and overall health. If you still have sex with your ex after breaking up, your physiological attachment to them continues. This might comfort you if you haven't accepted the separation yet, but it also gets in the way of you moving on. How you feel about this sex with your ex determines whether you end up more depressed because you're delaying the inevitable separation or detachment, or whether it's a crutch until you can walk by yourself again. So tip number three, be aware of your level of your physical attachment to your ex. Be aware that if you keep sleeping with them, you're satisfying physical needs, but you are also feeding your separation anxiety. Do what you can to raise your level of acceptance that the romantic part of your relationship is over. To quote the researchers, continuing to rely fruitlessly on an ex-partner for the fulfillment of needs is clearly maladaptive, yet less accepting people may be more likely to persist in precisely this manner. Overall, the researchers found that people with less separation acceptance, that is, greater longing for and attachment to an ex-partner, experience poorer psychological adjustment that comes out in feeling irritable, angry, having trouble concentrating, trouble falling and or staying asleep, and intrusive thoughts about the situation. Participants reporting the best psychological adjustment of all were those reporting more acceptance and having non-sexual contact with the ex. Having said that, the researchers mentioned the importance of not assuming that more separation acceptance automatically leads to better psychological adjustment. For example, a person who leaves their partner after an affair may report having accepted that the relationship is truly over and may avoid contact with the ex-partner, but that doesn't mean the intrusive thoughts about the separation experience and former relationship just stop overnight. Again, if you're finding yourself stuck in this pattern, seeking support from a professional might be a good idea. But also, here's the point I want to make to that specific example, because maybe it opens your perspective a little. Even the language we often use of going back to being just friends shows you how much we as a society are focused on romantic relationships as being the end goal. There is this expectation of a relationship moving forward and upward through several stages, the so-called relationship escalator, where you start dating someone and people ask, when are you going to get engaged? And then when you do that, the question is, when are you going to get married? And then it's, when are you going to have kids, etc., etc. And then you're just supposed to have it all figured out and be together forever. Most societies measure the quality of a relationship by how long it lasts. And relationships just don't always work that way. I don't know how many people I've talked to that tell me a variation of their parents only stayed together for the kids. Unfortunately, all the kids learned in that scenario is how not to have a happy relationship. Marriage and romantic intimate relationships are great, but they have to be allowed to change, quite simply because the people in them do, all the time. So what I want to say is, don't feel bad if your romance ends, and maybe using some of the tips from this video, let it morph into a friendship if that's what both of you want. Because there are ways to make it work. However, it's also okay not to stay friends. By the way, just because you shared a bed for 10 years doesn't mean you have to keep talking, even if there's no reason other than you no longer feel like it. That's okay too. You're allowed to change your mind and you can step off this relationship escalator at any point. To do that, you just have to be aware of it in the first place. So I hope, again, this video has given you some pointers. If you're struggling with accepting your separation, I have a video here with a few self-coaching questions that might help you reformulate your sense of self away from your ex. I'll see you there.